When you think of Russian women who happen to be tennis stars, the first name that comes to mind is probably Maria Sharapova. But before there was Maria, there was Anna. So how did Anna Kornikova revolutionize tennis? Let's find out. Who was Anna Kornikova? There aren't a lot of people who can say they took their sport to the headlines. These people get huge fan bases and they get celebrity status beyond their talent and skills too. One of these people was Anna Kornikova, who was the biggest thing the tennis world had seen since the start of the game. That doesn't mean she was crazy talented too, but people seem to forget that a lot just because she was so famous in her own right. She debuted as a pro when she was only 14 years old, setting a record for the youngest ever player to win the Fed Cup. One year later, at age 15, she made her Grand Slam debut at Wimbledon, which is where she was wiped out in the fourth round by Steffi Graf, who went on to be the champion. Is somebody I look forward to. She's still very young, I think 17 years old, and uh, she beat Martina here, and she's, she's always a big threat, and uh, you always have to watch out. Her season end ranking was only 57, but there was no doubt about it. Anna had made her mark on the tennis world, and it was only uphill from there. At 16, she participated in another huge tournament at Wimbledon, this time reaching the semifinals. The only person who beat her was the eventual champion, which just went to show that she was playing for the crown before she even graduated high school. Kornikova was only the second woman in the open era to reach the semis of her debut at Wimbledon, and just one year later, she broke into the world top 20 at number 16. The Russian was definitely on the roll, and she was showing no signs of slowing down. This was just the start of an incredible career. Her number 16 ranking was just for singles, but she wasn't doing too badly in the double either. She had a bunch of different partners for doubles, and she managed to grab the world number 10 rank there. But that top 10 wasn't going to last. Nope, it's not what you think. She actually managed to rank top in the world for doubles by the end of 1999 while holding the 12th place in singles. That was just the start. That same year, she went on to win her first Grand Slam title in doubles with Martina Hingis. Yep, that's the same Martina who beat her at Wimbledon just a couple of years beforehand. Looks like a little healthy competition can do wonders. The pairing was so good that they were named the doubles team of the year by the WTA, and it convinced every tennis fan in the world. Anna Kornikova was the reigning queen of doubles tennis. Yet again in 2002, she grabbed another win with Hingis at the 2002 Australian Open, and that was when the end began. She never won a doubles title again, and a singles major was something she hadn't won in her whole career. After that, she pretty much let go of the WTA tour and only played small smaller matches for charity. Kornikova was definitely crazy talented. You don't get that high in the rankings just by looking pretty. She had insane foot speed and even more insane baseline play. But as good as she was at most of it, her service was inconsistent in singles, which is why she never won a major throughout her life. Clearly, her playing style was just better for doubles, and she performed better with a partner at her side. Cheers. In 2003, at age 22, she suffered a back injury and gracefully exited the game forever. So what did people think of her outside of tennis? She had attention for a lot of reasons. When she made her debut in 1996, people noticed a lot more than just her talent on the court. She wasn't lacking in the looks department at all, and every magazine that could get a hold of her picture made sure to throw it on the front page. In fact, over the course of her career, her picture was printed in magazines like Sports Illustrated and Maxim, some of the biggest names in publishing even today. For four years, and three of them in a row from 2000 to 2003, she was put on the People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People list. And FHM named her the number one sexiest woman in the world in 2002. There was no doubt that she was stunning. Tall, fit, blonde, and crazy talented. She was the complete package, and she knew it. By the age of only 18, she had been linked to 
features some of the biggest names on the Russian sports scene. Pavel Bure and Sergei Fedorov were huge in Russian hockey, and they also happened to be over a decade older than Anna. People had a lot to say about that, but Anna couldn't have cared less. In fact, when someone asked her about it in an interview, she said that she has a different boyfriend in every single country she goes to, and she even kisses them all. The girl definitely wasn't afraid of anything, and she had no reason to be. But it wasn't long before the media stopped loving her and turned against her instead. Whoever said the media was kind? It's not like female athletes have ever been super respected. But this was the late 90s and early 2000s, and if you think women aren't respected now, they definitely weren't respected then. At the age of only 16, which is when most girls are still dealing with high school, she was described as a teen pot. And it was only much later that the writer of the article realized that he had been flirting with her. Two years later, at age 18, she was titled The Jezebel of Sweat, and the British tabloid The Sun promised to publish a picture of her every single day. Along with that, every article that ever talked about her made sure to drop the word flirt at least somewhere. One of the most defining moments of her career was Wimbledon 2002, when a BBC reporter interviewed her after she'd lost out in the first round. Her ranking was at 55, and her career had started slipping away. That interview was one of the most memorable ones to date, and not for a good reason. It basically just involved a lot of eye-rolling and awkward laughing, and the public knew that Kornikova was truly done. The WTA staff said more than a few times that she was rude and snobby, so she didn't have a great rep there either. She was a hugely talented player, but sadly, people only remember her as a bad player who got by on her looks and style. But no Nobody can deny the impact she had on the sport as a whole. She may have been the first to do it, but she wasn't the last. Before Kornikova came onto the scene, women's tennis was just the unnecessary version of men's tennis. It wasn't as good before Anna became the first superstar of the game. After her, we got Maria Sharapova, and the two completely changed the game forever. I want to. I've been, I've been able to do something that I, I loved from a very young age. Um, I've had some of my um, best I have pretty well-behaved fans, but there are some fans that have actually um, made tattoos of my name and my signature on their body, which I think the is... The first time I really got excited about money was when, after winning Wimbledon, um, I used to take trips to Los Angeles from Florida to, to train with a coach. I've been part of this event ever since I was a, a little girl, ever since I won major titles or big tournaments. It was really the event that gave me the their huge careers got way more girls into tennis and they both brought completely new styles to the game sharapova even used to be called the new kornikova and there was more than one reason for that the two were definitely amazing players but they were also two of the most stunning female athletes ever this got them massive brand deals with sharapova even earning more than the world number one serena williams with that kind of coverage and attention the girls started making more than the boys soon enough they became household names and today women's tennis gets almost the same viewership and ratings as men's tennis how many athletes can say they changed the game that way for good if you want the latest news on the tennis world as soon as it drops stay tuned to our channel for more and we'll see you in our next video